Good evening, brethren. Brother Robert's text this, this evening is Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonish, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in our hearts to the Lord. This is an exhortation to know the word of Christ. If you don't know the gospel, then you can't dwell in, then it can't dwell in you. This is a message for those who are already in Christ. If you don't know him, then you can't dwell in him. Um, I thought the word of God and the word of Christ were the same, but there is a distinction between the two. So I'm going to let Brother Robert come and enlighten us and expound on this text. I'll read it again. Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to thank the, all the brethren that um, prayed for me while I was ill. Um, I don't take these things lightly, and I know that you brethren don't either, that um, you don't know what a day is going to bring forth. But the Lord knows. He knows them that are His, right? And he, um, He's a very present help in the time of need. And um, I was given a, a little bit of time on during this recovery process to, um, to not be as active with my hands. And so I had to be more active with my mind. So I asked the Lord to, to help me to see this more clearly, uh, not just for my sake, but for the, the, all of our sakes. They would want to be able to, to handle the Word of God. I, I, I really appreciated this theme that we're on uh, today, and, and I was blessed to, to be able to be a part of it. So I thank the brother, and I thank the Lord for, for raising me up. Tonight I want to focus on one phrase of this verse in particular. Now I'm going to deal with a few different parts of it, but in particular, the, the Word of Christ. Now, there is a general sense in which this encompasses the whole volume of the book. You can't have the Word of Christ without the Word of God. I mean, it, it, it's kind of a, a general statement. But see, the distinction, I don't know that many have made the distinction. Uh, I kind of looked into the commentaries a little bit, and there was, most of them said, well, it really should be the Word of God. But I'm, I'm thankful that the translators translated it this way, because he's talking about a specific thing. Something that only Christ himself personally can minister. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So we look back there in uh, all them texts from the old covenant and all the revelations and all the testimonies and all the, the prophecies and the, the promises. and they, they, Christ was in them, right? It was the spirit of Christ that was in them. So there's nothing lacking in the engrafted word, it's the word of God. I mean, it was the word that was made flesh, right? It dwelt among us. So, I mean, he, now the question is, is really the bottom line, I'll just get right to it, is, is, is when Jesus speaks, does it have the same weight as when Moses speaks? Well, you say, well, it's the word of God, it's the same. Well, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let his understanding. The Word of God is quick, or it's living, and it's active. It's able to do what God sends it to do. Now, if God has sent a Word, what, what, would, what would Jesus talk about when He come if there was no Word that was sent before? You see what I'm saying? That God made, He paved the way, He gave, gave us the Word. And um, Jesus come and he, he brought life and immortality to light. By the gospel, he, he, he's made it alive to where you could actually understand it. No one ever listened to Jesus and went away and said, he's a simple thinker. Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> he's the word. The word of God, technically the volume of the book or the revelation that God's given of his son, encompasses every word, every syllable, syllable of divine revelation that was ever given to man. See, it's all encompassed in that this is the revelation that God has given us. Now, he can give it, but if nobody understands it, 
You see, that God desires to be known. He gave the revelation that it might be known, that we might understand what he's talking about. So it's all of it. It's all the curses. It's all the blessings. It's all the testimonies. In every age and in every testimony and every working of God in the earth, he had it written down. See, he, he, he wrote it down that we might know, we might be able to... It's, it's really is a shame in our present age for men not to know what God's doing. He's gone at great lengths to give us the record. Amen. So we, we, there's no excuse for us to look back and say, well, I don't really understand. Well, but you, he's not only given us the record, he's given us the Holy Spirit that we might know these things. <clears throat> now the Holy Spirit says, says it like this, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation, the prophets, our brother Rick is going to talk about this a little bit more. The prophets, they've inquired and searched digitally who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. He's talking about you now. You have received something that they didn't receive. They received the word, but it's kind of like handling something that wasn't for them. It was for us. which did in them signify when it testified beforehand of the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Now we're walking in some of that glory that's following. We're living in a time of the open heavens when God has, has poured, as it were, His Spirit out on, 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 on men in order that they might know His eternal purpose. So now how wrong is it for men to be ignorant of it? It's pretty, it's pretty wrong. Well, we don't get them out of that condition by saying it's pretty wrong. I know that. But it's got to be said. In this time that we're living in, there's a deficiency of being able to describe or to make known the things as they really are. We're living in a depraved spiritual environment. Amen. I'm talking about church environment. We're living in one where you can go to church. You can, you can give some diligence to kind of want to seek after God and as a word, the church slap you right down. Sit there and be quiet, and we'll tell you everything you need to think, everything you need to see. This is, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Amen. This, there's a word. God is at the right hand of God right now. At the right hand of God, there is a man, and that man's got something to say. We know by... Just by, you start a Genesis and start reading your way through it, you find out right away that God's a worker. God does things. You kind of start to get familiar, you familiarize yourself with the way God thinks. God's a thinker. He plans something before he does something. He says something before, before he's going to do it. Why? So when it comes to pass, you know who did it. This is it. The work of God is, the word of God is filled with testimonies concerning his works his promises, his curses, the things he hates, the things he loves. He makes it all known. Why? So that we can know him. Now, it's not enough just to know about God. If you're a Pharisee could stand up and tell you a lot of different things about God. He could do that. But it's not enough just to know about God. See, you've got to, you've got to know him. Paul said, I know whom I believed in. I, I know, I know him. Why? Well, see, Paul was speaking from a different, different perspective than the prophets were. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the prophets. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the word that the prophets gave. I'm saying we needed Christ to come in the flesh, live among us, be tempted at all points like as we are, ascend up in the glory, die, take away sins, ascend up in the glory, and sit there and administer the kingdom to where Paul could say, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. We should not expect believers to be able to grow up in the Christ on any other diet than the Word of God. It's impossible. It can't happen. In other words, if a person ignores the Word of God, they will never be able to let the Word of Christ dwell in them richly. They will never be able... This distinction, it, it, this is something that's living. This is a man that's alive, that's ministering his Father's goodwill and bringing many sons to glory. But, lest we be naive in this, we have an enemy. And this enemy, he knows that if I can just get the Word of God corrupted, of course, now some say you can't corrupt the Word of God. Well, ultimately, the Word of God is incorruptible, right? But there's a sense in which 
it can be corrupted. Second Corinthians 2 Corinthians 2.17 will tell you that. But we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. Now, how do they do it? Well, anytime you dilute or you add to what God has said, it ceases to be what God said, right? Uh -huh. And so what do you keep the people from? And maybe you thought, maybe in your heart, you think, well, I'm doing a good thing. I'm making it easier for the people to understand. I'm bringing it down a little bit to where they're at, to where they can get a hold of it. Have you ever heard that? Mm -hmm. What have you done? You've neutered it. You've taken all the power out of the text. People say, Re repent. It, it should, you should know you, something's wrong. Something's wrong if you've got to repent. So the Word of God can be corrupted or diluted. It can be made ineffective when it's tied together with the tra tra traditions of men. Say, well, but this is how we do it. Well, but that, I don't really care how you do it. What did God say about it? Well, what's God got to say about this issue? Like I've already said, it's not because the Word itself is corrupt. The Word itself is pure. But in the hands of an unskilled person, they can actually do more damage than good. They can actually make people think that God's a hard and an austere God. Just because of the way they handled the Word of God. Paul's aware that what you speak can corrupt your mind. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God speak we in Christ. So Paul's, Paul's looking at this. If you, don't, if you don't have a sincere desire to make God known, if you don't have a sincere desire to feed the sheep, well, maybe you shouldn't be talking. Maybe, see, this is, if, if you just, you're talking just to be heard, just so people can get to know me, is not the reason to talk. Yeah. It's that you might build up, see, edify. <clears throat> the Word of God can be so diluted with the opinions and traditions of men that it will scarcely resemble the genuine article. When you start really getting down to the bottom line of what people are teaching, it's hard to even connect it to something called the Scriptures. Uh -huh. yeah. So we need grace to have wisdom being able to rightly divide the Word of God. Now, Paul linked it to these things of sincerity, that our heart's in the right place, or our motives are right for the whole reason you want to speak, of God that making the person... Anytime someone stands and says, I'm speaking for God, you better be right. You absolutely have got to be right. Because the effects of that... See, I don't know. You could calculate all the effects of that. that you, how we could damage someone's understanding by misrepresenting God. Amen. So, and in the sight of God, now I, I particularly like this view, in the sight of God, knowing that every word that comes out of your mouth as you represent God will someday be judged by the one you represented. Now, we want to be right about that. Let the word of God, or the, or the word of Christ, dwell in you richly. There's a, the word of Christ, contrasting it with the Word of God. Now, I know that this is a fine distinction, and, and I, I think you, brother, will understand what I'm talking about. That there is a distinction. or it, The Word of Christ is speaking of a doctrine, of a specific teaching, of something that Christ says that nobody else not only can say, can, can effectually do in saying it. Now, His Word is with power, right? So He could just tell the demon to leave, and the demon leaves. Well, the, he hasn't stopped speaking. He's speaking right now from the right hand of God. He's, he's getting the work done, in other words. In a nutshell, the word of Christ speaks of what he says, what he teaches, his judgments, his, his, his leadings. Jesus, or the Christ, we know always speaks the word of God. There isn't anything he, he handles. God, Jesus is never going to bring somebody to God through the words of men. It's never going to happen. He, we, know what, we know what the resource that he uses, because when he was here on the earth, he said, the words that I speak to you, they are not my own. Yeah, so see, he, you, he's fully leaning on, on the word of God. So I, I, I don't want to leave this thinking that there's two separate entities. They're not. In fact, it would be impossible to separate them. 
The Word of Christ is the Word of God. It's not, it's not possible to separate it. Now, this is what John the Baptist said. Now, thinking of this, the weight of, uh, of Jesus. I, I've, I've been in so, an assembly one time when the man, after we talked for about a half an hour, he's told me, I've diagnosed your problem. I said, well, that's, give me the diagnosis. He says, you place more weight on the red letters than you do on the black ones. I said, well, that's a problem. But for him, this was a problem. He, he said, all, all the word of God's the same. Well, you, I, I got a problem with that kind of talk. Because Jesus, who was the word, who was with God, remember, in the beginning? He, he, he took on the form of a servant. He came, and, and the words that he said, he knew the Father. This is what John the Baptist said about him. John 3, 31. He that cometh from above is, is above all. He that is of the earth is earthy, and speaking of the earth, he that cometh from heaven is above all. Now that, I want to listen to this man. I want to listen to this man that's been, been higher, he's, he's been lifted up higher, exalted higher than any other personality. It's what he says, and what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth. And no man receiveth his testimony. He that receiveth his testimony hath sent to his seal that God is true. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God. This is what Jesus, Jesus does this. It's not like Jesus should do this. This is what Jesus does. Amen. He always does those things to please the Father. And when it comes to speech or what, his word, <laughs> Jesus will make you be able to understand the word of God. Amen. He speaks plainly. Jesus doesn't speak. Remember one time the, the apostles, I mean the disciples asked him, why do you speak in parables? It, it, this doesn't match what in their mind, this, it's not going to make it so easy to understand. He told them. He told them. See, it's, he said, it's given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to them, it's not given. So I speak to them in parables. See, Jesus' normal course of things is to open up, to reveal. He's a revealer. The eternal purpose of God. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. Now this is what John the Baptist, this is his diagnosis of the Christ. The one that would come. In other words, he will make things known. He'll, he'll come and, and, and his words, well, we'll be able to understand a lot better after he gets here. Well, Christ did not lose his former status. You see, well, Christ... In his pre-incarnate stage, before he was the man Christ Jesus, when he came to the earth, it wasn't like he lost his station with God. He laid it aside. He set it aside on purpose. You might say he came into the world and he defeated the, the devil as a man. He defeated Satan as a man. He laid aside. But when he rose from the dead and he ascended into glory, there's, there's a... On his thigh, it says the word of God. He's taken up again that which he set aside. And he says the one that's speaking from heaven. This is the one that we've been exhorted now to let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Uh, see, this, this, is, this has got to happen. This fellowship, or this level of fellowship, there is no other way to, to advance in the kingdom of God. You're not going to get any higher. Uh, I'm talking about in your understanding now. If you want to understand something, you don't first resort to the commentaries. You don't first resort to what men have said. You go to the man. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And all wisdom. Why? Because he's the, one, he's the one that understands. If anyone's ever understood it, Jesus gave it to him. It's just the way it is. So, you kind of cut out all the middlemen, go to Jesus. Now, I'm not saying I use commentaries all the time. But I, I want to go to the Lord. I want to ask him, can you show me this? Can this the, the Lord delights in this and opening up and revealing these things of God. Now, the word of Christ is a message that can only be heard by those who have been made alive or have been quickened by the Holy Spirit. So those that, the, those that have been made alive, they have, a, they have a special interest in letting the Word of Christ dwell in them richly. 
It's like they become a candidate. It's like you become a follower. You can sit at Jesus' feet now, and you can hear when he teaches. He'll teach you something. Well, I'm awfully thankful for that status. See, this is something that's not something you earned. It's something he did. If, are, you, are you take up your cross, follow after him, and what he'll do, he'll, he'll teach you. Another place it says, John 10, 27, speaking of the same idea, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Now, put yourself in this, in this picture now. You've cast off everything. Or you saw, you've, you've, you've seen the way that you really are. You've repented. You've been baptized. You've got the gift of the Holy Spirit. You're, you're following the Lamb. How much more is He inclined to teach you now? than when you were in the world. See, how much more is Jesus inclined to, to open something up when you ask? Why do you even have a desire to understand the intricacies of the kingdom of God? Why, why is your mind, it, 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 it's, it like, it's like a sponge. It, it wants to know more about God. Why? Because the lamb is leading you. The lamb is feeding you. And all of a sudden, you've, you've had this appetite for, to understand what God said. The lamb... He's, he's leading you. He's feeding you. And you can hear his voice. You can hear his voice. Now, you know, we have an enemy and he's shouting too. There's a lot of noise out there. Babylon makes a lot of noise. But see, you can come to a point, I'm convinced, when his voice is the sweetest, his voice gets your attention, and it's like it drowns out. When he starts speaking... All the others, you see, they, they don't have the power that they once had to distract when you start receiving things from this, this Christ. The message of the gospel is foolishness to those who don't believe. See, I, think I heard the same message as the guy sitting next to me, but it didn't affect him the same way. Why? Because to him it was foolishness. It, it didn't make any sense. Why did it make sense to you? Because Christ, to let the word of Christ dwell in you, he's, he's able... To make you understand. Now, the word of Christ is communicated or it's made known in real time. Now, I, I know I, that, does, that ain't how the Holy Spirit says it, but we're going to get to how the Holy Spirit says it. But you see what I'm saying? So as you walk with Christ, as you live for Him, as you die to self, that's when, that's when the information comes. That's when you can see the clearest. That's, that's right, right, right where you're living right now. You see, I can see why he did it that way. I can see why he made it that way. Because at no time can you take your hand off the plow and get anything from Jesus. It won't happen. No, nope. but as you're plowing with him, you'll see things you never saw before. Amen. See, heaven will become more real than it's ever come before. Why? Because you're plowing with the Savior. You're with him. And he's got a lot to say. Luke 9, 23, Jesus said this. He said it to all of them. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged? If he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words... Of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and his fathers and the holy angels. Now God has set Jesus as the primary speaker to the church. If the church is going to receive anything, they're going to have to get it through Jesus because he's the one that God set. He, he's the one that, that God's empowered to, to, to do this work in the body. And we've experienced a lot of growth, body growth, I mean. Why? Because see... The lamb. He's, he's been leading us. He's been feeding. He's been empowering. But it's not to those who are wayward. This is No one that's wayward is going to get what I'm talking about now. It's like you, you, you put too much distance between you and Christ and you can't hear his voice anymore. God said Jesus as the primary speaker. Well, then let's let him speak. Peter, James, and John, they found this out one day. Remember? They went up to the mountaintop with Jesus. What a special invitation that was. I'd like to be in that group. Where Jesus could say, come on, you three, come with me. We're going to go up a little bit higher today. 
Mark 9 is the account. It says, there, there appeared unto them, with them, Elias and Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. <laughs> you notice they weren't talking to the disciples, but they were talking with Jesus. And, and Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Now the Holy Spirit adds a little commentary here for anyone who thinks they would have done better than Peter. It says, for he wist not what to say, for they were sore afraid. Okay, if you could just put yourself in that circumstance, here's, <laughs> these are the, the, the fathers, as it were. They're right there, and they're talking to Jesus, and oh, they were so afraid. Now, as I've heard some people say that every word of God's on the same level, then Peter would have been right, right? If every, everything that ever been said by every, any man that God ever sent was on the same, well, then three tabernacles would have been in line. It would have been perfectly comport with that teaching. If the words of Moses and the prophets are on the same spiritual plane as the words of Jesus, then why not make it be the same thing? But we don't need to lean on the opinions of men for the answer. God himself would not allow this thought to, to stand. Amen. Mark 9, 7, it says, There was a cloud that overshadowed them. You can see that here comes this cloud. So I'm, this is not going to, this the way of thinking has got to go right now. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. He's the one that I have deposited all the wisdom and knowledge of salvation. He's the one that I've given life, and he, he can give life to whomsoever he will. This is my beloved son. And if you're going to listen to anyone, listen to him. Amen. This is the one. All the others that came before him, they, they were pointed to him. Moses pointed to Christ. This is what's, the way God set it up. How would we understand anything about Christ if he hadn't sent all the apostles, I mean the, the prophets ahead of time? with the Spirit of Christ in them to prophesy about that one that was going to come. God has set Jesus as the primary speaker to the church. This event so shaped Peter's thinking. Peter, even years later, couldn't get this out of his mind. This was, this was a pinnacle in Peter's life. It's what he said in 2 Peter 1.16. We have not followed cunningly devised fables. We're not just following something that some other man made up. We got proof. <laughs> when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but well, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. We saw him on the mount. And that so transformed the way we thought about Jesus. We need to see Jesus up exalted on the mountain. Why? He can change your life. Don't let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Why? Because this is the king of kings. Amen. This is why. Amen. We were eyewitnesses of his majesty. He received from God the Father honor and glory. We saw it. He is transfigured right before our face. Oh, if you could see heaven right now. I know you can by faith. But I'm talking if you could just put the tip of your toe into that place for one second. You would never be the same. And this is what Christ is doing. If you let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, he's making all the promises real. He's making it all have form and shape to where it directs your thinking, directs your mind. Where there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard... When we were with him in the mind, we heard this ourselves. You know, anyone who's had a genuine conversion experience has met the Lord, seen him for who he is. See, they know what he's talking about. They know it. Anybody who's ever fellowshiped with the Lord, they know what Peter's talking about. And that's the testimony that I'm talking about. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. See, he can say that to people who have had an encounter with Jesus. When anyone stands and ministers unto the Lord in the assembly, that ministry finds its effectiveness as the person exalts Christ, as they make Christ known. As you see Christ more clearly, what happens? You come up higher. That's what, that's what happens. You, you, you do it. Amen. You don't have to tell me to come up higher. Show me Christ and I'll come up higher. Amen.
It's the word of Christ that makes edification possible. It's not something we create ourselves. Now, as, as you walk with Christ, you, you can see more clearly how to instigate it, if, you, if I can say it that way. You kind of lead people in the right direction, their minds in the right direction. Before long, they'll be convicted of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment to come. It'll happen. Start preaching Christ. If Jesus had not been... If Jesus has not been clarified because of what's been spoken, then it's maybe highly questionable whether or not the word of Christ has been spoken. See, yeah, I don't know that you could preach the gospel. Preach Christ. Preach what God's done on the behalf of, for us and through Christ, and people not have some kind of an effect. It's going to always have some kind of an effect. God's given the Holy Spirit. This is the last section that I'm going to sit on. I think I'm out of time already. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. God didn't like just roll the dice on this. And I'm speaking very vulgarly as a man. He didn't like to leave any of this to chance. When Jesus was getting ready to leave, he knew, he knew what was in man. He didn't need anybody to testify about man. He knew he made man. So he gave him this word. In John 14, 25, he says, These things have I spoken to you, being yet present with you, but he was getting ready to go away now. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I, I have said unto you. Whatsoever I have said unto you, I'm the one that has come and has brought you the Word of God. I'm the one that's coming and lived the Word of God. Now when I go away, I'll send the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. What, what will he do? Will he speak of himself? No, no, he won't speak of himself. He'll speak what I said. Amen. He'll bring it to remembrance what I said. Jesus is the, the authorized teacher of the church. Amen. John 16, 12 says, I have many yet th things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. That's what he said then. But see, something's happened. Amen. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. Whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. I'm going to send a comforter, and he's going to, I'm, going to, I'm going to be talking to him. He's going, to, he's going to say whatever I whisper in his ear, so to speak. And he's going to glorify me. In other words, you're going to know who I am. When the, when the comforter's not working... You, you, you see, you, that's kind of like a snag. You see that? But with the comforter, if the comforter's doing his work. In other words, if you're picking up your cross, denying yourself, coming after Jesus, the comforter's going to be doing his work. And the end result of that is you're going to know Jesus better. You're going to understand better his eternal purpose. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. If the church is known for anything, let it be known that they're experts in handling the Word of God. Yeah, I'd much rather put myself under the ministry of someone who's an expert in the Word of God than in one who can speak well or lead. Amen. Amen. Whatever Christ has given you to see, whatever that is, walk in it. Do whatever the Holy Spirit's opened up to you about Christ. Whatever it is, you may say, well, this I don't see as much as you. Walk in what you have. Walk in what he's revealed. Because that's how you're going to get more. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Christ is, is still that still small voice. Remember Isaiah talks about that still small voice. He's still that one. So the nine, Isaiah 30, 21, And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way... Walk in it. Now, I know you walk with the Lord very long and you'll be able to testify. I know what that's talking about. I know that something came up and I didn't have a thus saith the Lord on it. But I could just sense in my spirit the Lord saying, don't go there. Don't do that. Don't. Or he could say, go, go do this. What is that? It's letting the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Amen. The word of Christ is not specifically, and I want to be careful when I say this, but I want to say it because I, it's true. The word of Christ is not specifically made known in the accounts of Noah and Abraham and, or Moses or even Elijah. See, these, these were, this record that God's given us 
it's all connected. But see, if I major in preaching about Noah and never get around to preaching about Christ, then I've handicapped the church. See, I have because, but see, all the, Christ is in all that. I don't want to deny that Christ is in. You look at the, the, the Noah and what God did, you can see Christ in it. But that, we're looking back. We have the word of Christ dwelling in us richly. So we can look back and say, oh, now I can see that. But if you take the word of Christ out of the picture, well, see, I don't even know if you would get as much information out of that as Noah did. You see, you see what I'm saying? You take Christ out of it and it loses its ability to edify. The message that we've been given, it, it's from a risen Savior. It's from an exalted Savior. It's from a victorious Savior. It's, he, he's, he's able to save to the uttermost. He's there. He's already, he's already went through all the trouble. He's already gave his life. He's already rose from the dead. He's there now. So of course, if you just let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, he'll bring you where he is. Well, I'll close it with that one. And I thank you, brethren, for being patient with me.